So, that was a thing. For those who aren't in the know, in late August, Crunchyroll released what they called a trailer for a new animated series called High Guardian Spice, which lit the internet on fire. And not in a good way. Since I am an animation critic, I figured that I'd have to talk about this particular trailer and the show at some point, so I might as well as get it out now. Especially because this is a microcosm of the cultural landscape. This kind of thing has happened before, many, many times at this point, and I'm pretty sure at this rate it's going to keep happening. The trailer upset a lot of people for a variety of reasons. One of the main complaints is that it's a Crunchyroll original animated series that's being produced here in the West. From what I understand, I don't use Crunchyroll, but it's reputably a terrible service with awful infrastructure. And on top of that, they guilt trip people into buying their service, saying that paying for them helps the coffers of the starving Japanese studios. So instead of putting more money into the Japanese studios' coffers or improving their infrastructure, they're making this. And the fact that Crunchyroll is making an animated series in the West, not just this particular one, anyone, rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, and it made Crunchyroll seem like holier-than-thou hypocrites, taking money under false pretenses. Not helping is the fact that almost immediately Crunchyroll disabled ratings and comments on their trailer, and later on, the forum for the show was locked, although that was done by volunteer moderators and not Crunchyroll themselves. So, what's the show about? Well, from what I learned, it's about four girls who live in a magical city who are learning to be guardians. How is the city magical? I have no idea. What is a guardian? I don't know. What are our main characters' names, even? I still don't know. Why don't I know any of these things? Because none of these things were mentioned in the trailer. The only concrete thing that was mentioned was the first sentence of this paragraph. It's about four girls who live in a magical city and are learning to be guardians. Is the show going to be good? Bad? Mediocre? I don't know. I don't have enough information to know. People say that the show kind of looks like a cross between Steven Universe and Little Witch Academia. And from what I understand, both of those shows are pretty good. But even with that inference, you can't really tell if it's good or bad, if it's going to be inspired or a rehash. From what I can see, I will say the background art, or the concept art, whichever they are, it does look really good and highly detailed. This show has the potential to be very impressive visually. However, that's the only good thing I can say about the trailer, because the trailer is awful. There is no two ways to slice it. Whether you're looking forward to the show or not, the trailer is awful. In this trailer, we focus more on the people behind the cartoon than the actual cartoon. This would be fine on something like an extra features on a DVD or a director's commentary, but not an actual trailer that's supposed to get people excited for the show. In the realm of animation or pretty much any entertainment media, we care more about what we're seeing than the people who are behind it. If I had to guess, the reason for them picking this approach is because the cartoon probably isn't that far into production. After all, this is Crunchyroll's first time trying this. It sounds like a mistake that a first-timer would do. The show is coming out in 2019, which could mean January or it could mean December, which is a a huge span of time in terms of animation. The lesson here is that if you don't have the materials to show us exactly what you're working on and exactly what it's going to look like, it's probably too soon to make a trailer at all. But let's go further into this, what we actually learned about the series, what they did tell us. One thing they say a lot is the most baffling thing that I've ever heard. The fact that Crunchyroll Originals is doing this as a 2D animated series, it's giving us an opportunity to do things artistically that a lot of other shows and other studios really have forgotten how to do. I'd understand this if they were talking about a feature-length movie, but 2D animation, as far as television or even internet animation goes, is thriving. If you asked me to name a bunch of currently airing cartoons off the top of my head, I'd probably name about 20 2D animations, name Sonic Boom as a 3D animated series, and then all the other ones I mentioned would be 2D animation. On top of that, the show is coming out on a platform known for distributing anime. The only 3D anime that I personally know is Gregory Horror Show. Everything else, even their films, is like 99% 2D animation. If 2D animation dies everywhere else, in the world, Japanese animation will still keep primarily being 2D animation for a long time to come. A lot of what they say about the series is incredibly vague. It's funny and it's warm and it's adventurous and they're letting us make it a little bit weird, so that's very exciting. In a trailer, you need to talk about specifically what makes your show stand out. This statement tells how it blends in. What they said there could apply to any other show currently airing. Hell, any show of the last 20 years. Steven Universe, Adventure Time, My Little Pony, regular show, Bojack Horseman. I think what was said was actually a part of the theme song to Star Versus. And they're letting us make it a little bit weird. It's gonna get People are really excited about what the show is and what it represents. Who are these people you speak of? In most trailers, this is where you'd get, like, a citation. Like, New York Times says it's a heartwarming and wonderful story. When you just tell us that it's people, it means nothing. It could be the other co-workers or it could be your family. People could mean literally anyone. The fact that Crunchyroll Originals is doing this as a 2D animated series, it's giving us an opportunity to do things artistically that a lot of other shows and other studios really have forgotten how to do. Like, 
What? What have other studios forgotten how to do? I, I haven't noticed any lost animation techniques looking into old cartoons. Let me put it this way. When Butch Hartman said that media lost its way in the trailer for his project, he was at least able to point to examples of why he felt that way. And he was derided because he was too vague in his trailer. But all of this is small potatoes as the reason that most people are talking about this trailer. And I suppose I can't get away with not mentioning it. We are 50% female in all the creative roles, and our writer's room is 100% female. The rest of the video is going to be talking about this aspect of the trailer. So if you don't want to hear it, you can back out now. I'm going to start small. With a little bit of nitpick. The smallest thing about this whole ordeal. Writers are a creative role, so either the person who wrote this script doesn't consider writer a creative role, or they wrote this in one go without proofreading, which does not bode well for anything tangentially related to this. Secondly, this trailer, this whole thing. This is part of a marketing tactic that's gotten really popular in the past few years, even though it should not have gotten popular at all. I have no idea why studios and creatives are still doing this and tackling things through this angle. Not because it's lazy or because it's a trend or because it's sexist or racist or anything like that. It shouldn't have gotten popular because it doesn't work. Ghostbusters 2016. We're all female and you're sexist if you don't like us. Ghostbusters 2016 was a flop. Ocean's 8. We're all female and you're sexist if you don't like us. Ocean's 8 was an absolute flop. Battlefield 5. We've got females front and center and you're sexist if you don't like us. Pre-orders are down massively and it's probably going to fail. High Guardian Spice. We've got females front and center. What I'm saying is that there's a precedent. Making a trailer like this is a bad idea in terms of making a trailer. We have evidence that this type of marketing no longer works. And let me make this absolutely clear. These products are not failing because the mainstream audience is sexist or racist or hates the idea of diversity or anything of the sort. They're failing because when you insult the audience, people are not going to want to buy your products. If I get called sexist for making this video, it's not going to make me more likely to watch High Guardian Spice. And to be quite frank, and I think this needs to be said, saying that audiences don't like diversity and that's why these products are bombing, is counter to the interests of people who do want diversity. If you keep on saying that these products are failing because they star women or minorities, while ignoring the actual failings of the product, sooner or later, that's what the marketing machine of media is going to think. They're going to start thinking that diversity is box office poison. And we're going to have much less diversity than we did before this push even started. Because films, cartoons, yes, even video games, do have diversity. I mean, especially cartoons. From my perspective, this is probably going to be the hill that this type of marketing finally dies on. Two of the most beloved people in animation right now are female, Rebecca Sugar and Lauren Faust. We have a lot of very popular shows with a cast that's majority female or stars a female character. Star vs. Loud House, Friendship is Magic, Steven Universe. Maybe they're not the majority of shows, but each of these has been massively successful. Friendship is Magic sparked a huge fandom that still goes on to this day. Star vs. was so popular that it came back from a network Disney puts things on to die. Loud House beat SpongeBob in the ratings, which was for the longest time an unstoppable juggernaut. Hell, we could even throw Core onto this pile, a show that many people consider their favorite of the decade, a show that stars a female character. Character. Female characters even have representation with shitty shows like Powerpuff 2016 and Mysticons. If you want to play this game that everything is sexist and everything is racist, I could say that this show and supporting it is racist. The pretense that Crunchyroll gave was that your money was going to Japanese studios, but they're using this money to produce something here in the States. I am not saying that Crunchyroll is racist. I am saying that they're bad at business, but what I'm really saying is that this is just stupid. This argument is stupid. People who aren't going to watch the show for what it's pushing are not sexist. We have evidence now that shows and movies and products that go out of their way to push this message front and center tend to be bad. Ghostbusters 2016 said you were sexist for not wanting to see it, but if you did see it, well, each of the characters fell into stereotypes. Powerpuff 2016 tried to do the same thing express girl power, but removed one of the smartest role model characters, because there's no other way to put it, they thought her breasts were too big, and they had the characters who were supposed to be role models act like assholes and get captured every other episode, even frequently needing to be saved by the most incompetent male on the show. So many people think that diversity is the only thing you need to make a good show, that people will start watching it just because it's diverse, and that is clearly not true. I want to state that there is nothing wrong with putting diverse characters into a show. There is nothing wrong with making a show that has a lot of diversity. Characters of different genders, sexualities, and races. It's actually important, I think. But you need more than just diversity to make a good show. Ironically, at this point, making a show just to be diverse doesn't even make you special. It makes you look like you're chasing a trend, the least diverse thing you can do. 
And this is especially bad because trends die. They go out of vogue. If media keeps going down this route, diversity is going to be box office poison, and no one's going to want to deal with it. Now, to talk about their quotes about their writer's room. Back when I was a teenager, there was a joke told in class. When we were asked, what does diversity mean, someone said, less white men. And he got detention, because that was not what diversity means, or it's not what it used to mean. Having a writer's room full of only women is not diversity. It is the opposite of diversity. And I understand the logic that these people are coming from. Achieving balance is not the same thing as being balanced. That's where their logic is. There are so many other writers' rooms filled with only men, it's okay to explicitly go out of your way to make a writers' room of only women. It's not going to work in the long run. It's just going to make you look like a hypocrite. That is all it does. You cannot achieve balance without being balanced. More prejudice does not fix prejudice, plain and simple, and that's not going to change. If the people who made the show specifically went out of their way to make sure that the writers' room was only female, yes, it is sexist, and the show was created by sexists. Plain and simple. I hear a different definition of types of prejudices a lot. Women can't be sexist towards men, or the majority can't be prejudiced towards the minority, because whatever ism, sexism, racism, whatever, is prejudice plus power. And to that I have to say, okay, so you're the one with the power to determine what words mean over me. It sounds like you're the one with the power in this situation. Let's stop playing these word games and stop being angry at each other and try to make compromises. Try to make good, better cartoons that happen to be diverse. If you want to make a show that's primarily female and good, that's fantastic. If you succeed, I will certainly watch it. I will praise it. If you want to make a show that's primarily female and nothing else, well, that's all it'll be. And we've got a lot of media that has a primarily female cast, and they have so much more to offer. That is all I have to say on the matter.